So NASA in Hebrew does not mean to deceive. This sounds strange, right? NASA in Hebrew doesn't mean to deceive or does not mean to deceive. Well, the word, the word NASA, NASA. Well, first of all, was having a conversation on WhatsApp with a sister and, and Sister Estefania, you know, this is for the eye. This is because of our reasonment so that hopefully we can kind of give a, a, a visual demonstration as well as to kind of clarify a disorientation. There's a lot of memes out there which are kind of disorientated. You know, um, they're touching on some things as if though they were, for example, the NASA, the NASA point. So now the conversation we were speaking about, you know, Sister mentioned like forgive and forgiveness and then also I think saving and like salvation. But the context of what was being said, I immediately recognized, you know, this Western Gentile, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, the what get lost in translation. A lot gets lost in translation. So when we read in the Bible, you know, from English, I'm not saying that it's all um, mistranslation, but there are some key things that get lost in translation. This is one of them, the whole NASA thing. So as I began to think about, well, what is forgiveness? Because something was said about, you know, forgiving ones. And so should we allow ourselves to be bullied? And, you know, like just reasoning on that. And I began to think, well, I understand from my studies and research, you know, what this means and what that means, you know. And on this particular subject matter, I understand that when I looked up in the scripts, for example, forgive, I began to look at the Hebrew sense of it too, right? And then I remembered the whole NASA thing. So here we're looking at NASA and you've probably seen this meme and there's other memes just like it, right? That purport that NASA, right, or NASA in Hebrew, for example, if we say it in the Hebrew, be NASA, 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 ah, NASA, ah, NASA, NASA. But in the English way, we say NASA, NASA, na, ah, ah, ah. That's not really the vowel there, right? It's NASA, right? NASA in Hebrew does not mean, quote, to deceive. It just doesn't. I know people like to say, well, look at the bottom right there. You see, he's lying about that. No, you don't read or understand Hebrew. If you understand what that, what the Hebrew down there says, let's just zoom in on this right here. You see the Hebrew down here? What's that, the 5377, right? The 5377. You see the English? You see above the S, there's like this, uh, I don't know if it's, a, is that a circumflex or is it inverted? I'm not too sure, but it's that, like V. You see the with like a V that's above the S? Properly pronounced in Hebrew, the word that is featured here, the 5377, the Hebrew, is Nasha. It's Nasha. 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 Nasha means to deceive. So what you see at the bottom right there, what you see at the bottom, the Hebrew, think from the Strong's, it looks like a Strong's concordance reference, you know, what you see there in the Hebrew is correct. You see the phonetics, we zoomed in on the N, A, you see the A has a, has a long, you know, it's a long A, and you see the S, the S has this this kind of like a V symbol above it. Well, in phonetics, that will be a sh, sh, sh sound. Not a s, s, but a sh. That'll be like an sh sound, All right? So actually this meme right here, this meme is probably well-meaning, but it's an incorrect meme, right? Because NASA, right, or NASA in Hebrew means to lift, means to lift. Okay, let's go through this right here. Let's go through this right here. Let's let's bring this out right here to lift. So let's bring it back to this right here. Now, first things first, let's look at the S's. I'd like to show you something with the S's for a moment. Now you can see we have a couple of memes to share right here. Let's start off right here, right? So what we have is in the Hebrew is the letters Sheen and seen, right? The pointing. 
we have sheen and we have seen, right? Many say that the ancient letter, no doubt, was a syllabated sound or a sh, that was the sheen, right? Because we already have the samek. Those who understand Hebrew, we have the samek, right? Samech, the samek is the S sound, the plain S sound, right? But there's the letters sheen and seen, right? Are the same. So you see S-I-N in the Hebrew is not sin, but it's seen, seen. So we have to understand like the vowels, right? They are the seven primary, right? You say tones, right? Now they're the same, it says constant, but have a different pronunciation according to the placement of the nikudot or the nikuda, right? The nikud, nikudot. Nick Udot is like the dot, the pointing. Remember, it says a jot or a tittle uh, in the law shall not pass. So we have the sheen. You see where the sheen is? You see how it's dotted right there on the right hand side? And the seen is dotted on the left hand side. Now, people say, well, in English or in other languages, that might not be important. In many languages, it is very important. Now, there's different. You know, fontography, you know, the fontography, different writing or different, you could say, script forms right there. But here, let's go over here. Then we have the paleo. You know, if we touch on the paleo, it's the one down there. You see the sheen down there, right? The sheen down there, right there. There's the sheen, right, on the right-hand side, across from the yod, right? Then the sheen, sheen. Here's, here's what we're talking about right up here. The sheen, sheen or the sheen scene. Sheen, you see the dots, right? The pointing right there. Now, although, like we said, in the ancient, in the ancient, this symbol, right, without pointing was said to be a SH sound, a SH sound. But there is the dot on the right-hand side that makes it a SH sound, and the dot on the left-hand side that makes it a S, right? So this is another way of saying it. For example, on the right-hand side, the sheen dot is like we have in the word um, kosher or kesher, kesher, or pointed as kosher, kosher, right? Then on the left-hand side, we have the dot on the left-hand side, and that's the seen dot, right? Right? As in Palestina. Or Palestina, as it's pointed, Palestina, Palis, not Palish, but Palis. But what's interesting is that in biblical Hebrew, that region or area was also known, you know, by the Peleshet, the Peleshet, Peleshet. So, so the She in biblical Hebrew, but here just to bring out this whole dotting thing. Now, here, 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 we have a couple of examples right here, right? Right, so now here is where the confusion, the confusion comes in, right, by not understanding the Hebrew and the pointing of the Hebrew. You see right here, we have na-sha. You see, na-sha. Na-sha means to err. Na-sha means to deceive. Na-sha, right? You see where the pointing is? on the sheen, right, where the pointing is. Let's see if we can zoom in. Where the pointing is on the sheen. Now, we've just been touching on the sheen. Rewind the video if you don't know what letter we're pointing to, right? For those who are familiar with the Hebrew, the Ivrit, you definitely understand this right here. Nasha, Nasha. It's Nasha. So Nasha, right, means to deceive. But interestingly enough, right, very, we find this to be very interestingly enough. Now you can see it right here. The dot is a little bit more clearly pointed right there. This is nasha, nasha, right? Nasha meaning to be deceived, right? Now we have this right here. We have nasha. You see, this is also nasha, but you have to be able to read the Hebrew correctly. Right now, we can go through, and we should really go through some of the um, the words right that are being confused right by those who are not familiar with the Hebrew. Right, so two words are being confused. We have the let's bring it up here. Now here, this is nasa. This is really 
nasa nasa this is nasa nasa because the ain you see the ain ain it's a guttural it's a hard a ain we have we have alef a and a there's a a and a these two different the two a's the alef and the ain so this right here the nun samech and ain here this is na sa nas a nas a nas a nas a to travel right it means to travel right now there are similar words before we even get into all of that right there let's bring this back right here to what we're speaking about with nasa right nasa right so first things first let's scroll over here we have this nas nasa a nasa a so there is there is nasa nasa to lift and there is nasa a nasa 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 a which means to travel and there is nasha 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 which means to be deceived to be deceived or in biblical language to be beguiled this is what the womb man right or the isha right the eshet the Oset. this is what she said this is what she said when yahuwah according to moshe's first book i right, had asked her she said that the the serpent the nahash had beguiled right had nashad nashad her right not had nasad her but here's what's interesting nasa as they call the so-called space agency right the word in hebrew here the 70 the, the 5375 the 5375 you see it right here nasa note this right here nasa nasa right this is nasa what does it mean it's related to nasa nasa so we have the two Hebrew words, the one highlighted in the green is na sa na sa a na sa na sa na sa The one below it that's not highlighted is na sa na sa na sa The difference is the ending. One has the alef and one has the he, he. The next difference, right, is that we have one is written with the scene the S sound, and one is written with the Samek, Samek, also the S sound, right? So here you see where it's in Psalm 4 and 6, verse 7 and other Bibles, Nasa, right, is a primitive, an ancient root word. We say African, ancient African, Shemitic, Afro-Shemitic root word. It means to do what? To lift, to lift. Interesting because Nasa, Right, NASA, what is NASA all about? Right, one thing that NASA is all about is what the takeoff, the lifting up, the shooting rockets up into the firmament. <laughs> is that what NASA is all about? NASA, NASA. Right now, do they, does NASA, NASA? Well, yes, we know that NASA, 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 the agency known as NASA, but NASA. Nasa itself means to lift, right? It means to lift, right? Let's bring this down right here because this is one of the best ways of explaining it right here. So basically what we have is two different ways of spelling a word that has the same meaning. The 5375, we have Nasa, Nasa, and we have nasa, nasa. That the hey at the end is the difference. One a alef, and the next one is a hey. They both are known, Hebraically speaking, as kind of like weak, you know, weak sounds because they're very light. The alef, alef, ah, 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 and the hey, hey, hey. Very weak, very light sounds. So these two words both mean to lift. Why right, to lift in a great variety of applications, both in the literal sense of something being lifted, right, but also in a figurative sense, right? 
both in the absolute sense and in the relative sense. This is breaking down now how the word according to its particular context. For example, we have nasa, right? Remember, the basic primitive root of nasa is to lift, right? We're going to touch on the nasha. You see, people are confusing the 5377, right? What is the 5377? Is nasha, nasha. Nasha, not nasa. Nasa means to lift up, right? To lift up, right? Nasa means to lift, as we have it with nasa, to lift. So in some cases, whether literally or figuratively, absolutely or relatively speaking, it can mean to accept, to advance, to arise, like to be able to, like to arm oneself, the armor, to suffer, to be here. So the sense of nasa also, in addition to its root primitive meaning of to lift, can also mean to be here. Like somebody bearing, you know, one bearing a burden, so to speak, right? Or to bring something. Because like one has to lift something like a load. Also it can mean to burn, right? To carry away, to cast, contain, desire. So you see many of the relative meanings of it. One thing is interesting. You see down there where it says to pardon. You see what it says to pardon? Because this is one of the words, the nasa, that is used within the Hebrew scriptures for to forgive. That's why I said at the beginning that I was having a conversation on WhatsApp, you know, for sister and a fellow disciple, you know, and as he was reasoning, the word forgive and forgive, I mentioned about forgiving. Right, but I was thinking about forgive within the Hebrew, right? You know, within that HD sense, based on that Hebrew definition, right? But then it immediately became clear to me that, you know, my sister, you know, might not have been seen in that sense, but through the white Anglo Saxon Protestant counterfeit Christianity sense. You know, where they say forgive, like when they say forgive, right? To forgive, what does forgive mean? Not, 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 what, not what we're going to philosophize. We can philosophize. Not what we can philosophize on forgive. You know, we can philosophize, well, forgive, you know, if you forgive, you know. But getting to some of the root words, why is this word, nasa, the same word to lift, connected in the primitive Hebrew sense, right, as we have scripturally, right, according to the linguistic science of it, to pardon, right? We have the same word to lift has a sense of to pardon in the sense of to forgive, right? To forgive, right? Shall we go a little bit deeper on this right here? I think we should, right? Just in this, because this is, I was thinking about either to, even just to record something, but I thought, well, if I record, right? This is one way, like, see, there's some relative words right here. Right, the nasha. You can see we're on the nasha right there. Right, we'll go to some link words, nasha. Now, in this sense, nasha, right, can mean to forget, to deprive. But remember, it's a nasha. Nasha. It has a hey, the H at the end, which is distinct and different from the one with the alef. But all of that being that, let's go right here and let's just connect this right here. Right, because we was going to, into a deeper search. So first, I think we had put um, the first thing we put here is is forgive. Let's put forgive right here. All right, let's put forgive right here. So here we're using the um, my sword software. Right, and forgive is found according to the Old and New Testament reference here, King James Version of the Bible, 96 verses are found. I would say the King James Version is good in a structural sense when you're studying translations and linguistics from that level, but when we get into the detail, the divinity is in the detail, or the lack thereof is the devil or the delusion. Without the details, it's where we speak about the counterfeit Christianity, this idea of forgive, but say forgive somebody, well, what are we doing? In other words, if I forgive somebody, what are we doing? This word forgive, it means do I give four times or am I giving four? 
like towards something I'm giving? What does this really mean? All right. So here we're going to go through a little bit of the Hebrew. Now, if you noticed, one of the first verses for forgive is Genesis 4.13, where it says, And Ayan Cain said to Yahweh, right, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Pause. What about this is forgive? Now, here they have a, have a note here. It says, my, mine iniquity is greater than that it may be forgiven. All right, so the first reference in the scripture, in the Hebrew Bible for forgive, all right, is Genesis, Bereshith in the Hebrew, chapter 4, verse 13, where Kayan said to Yahweh, right, to Yahweh, hey, to Jehovah, my punishment is greater than I can bear. But now bringing this out, let's bring this out a little bit more here. So this is the first instance in the scripture. So if we endeavor to ask the question, well, you know, what does forgive mean in the biblical Hebrew sense? Like, what is it pointing to? What sort of an act or what sort of an action is it pointing to? So here we have Genesis 4 and 13 where it says, Wayomer kayin illa Yahweh. Right, Illa Yahuwah Gadol Avoni, modern Hebrew Avon, you know, Avoni or Awoni, you know, Awoni, Avoni, uh, right, my moral perversity, Mia Niso, Mia Niso, Mia Niso. Now, here we're using this, we could go down here, let's go down here to. To the Tanakh, right? Why you merk ayin illa Yahwa Gadol Avoni Aoni Aoni Mina so mean so mean so mean so this word right here mean so right mean so right from Niso. Now, what is Niso? Now, note right here that up here where we had the King James version right let's go right here notice they brought it they brought out the hebrew here in this modern you could say retranslation of it much more accurately see the king james version basically says this right here the king james version says and cain said to the lord my punishment is greater than i can bear now, here we have the Strong's word. You see next to greater is the H1419, right? This is Gadol. Gadol is, 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 is bigger, right, or more important, right? Here we have right here, my iniquity, Avoni, Aoni, Aoni, right? Aoni in the ancient Afro, African Afro-Shemitic pointing, Aoni, modern Hebrew, they'll say Avoni, Avoni. Avoni, Avoni, from Aon, Aon, which means like moral twistedness, perversity, is Gadol, is greater. But notice the second part, then that it may be forgiven, right? But notice what the King James Version says right here. It says, then I can bear. What, what does it mean by bear? It means like endure, to carry, to carry, remember that, or lift. Remember the key word right here. Let's go to this word. I can bear. Bear is the H7, the H5375. The H5375, you click on it, we have these two words, what we've been touching on from the previous slide exhibit. We have Nasa, we have Nasa and Nasa. All right? We have Nasa with the hey, right? The H. And we have Nasa, Nasa with the Aleph, Nasa, Nasa and Nasa. Not Nasha. Nasha, remember, Nasha means in Hebrew to deceive or beguile. We're going to touch on that hopefully here, right? So the BDB, Browns Drivers Briggs definition, brings it out pretty good right here. To lift, to bear up, to carry, to take. Now, we showed you the note, and the note says, then it may be forgiven. 
than that it may be forgiven. Because forgiveness, the original Hebraic sense in the HD of forgiveness has to do with the, the sin, the uckery, the wrongdoing is like a burden. It's almost like we say guiltiness, rest upon them conscience. Oh yeah, All right, that guiltiness, right? You know, guiltiness, something, you know, like something you did or experience. You know, these things rest on our psyche, our souls, our nefesh, nafsho, right? They rest on them like a weight, you know? They, they can be a physical burden, like something you're trying to carry physically, right? But what about when it is psychologically or psycho-spiritually? It's in your psychology, it's in your psyche, it's in your mind, it's in your emotion, it's in your feelings, right? So I submit to you because of the lack of true forgiveness, this is why there's so much of what the doctors call psychosis or mental health you know, issues, mental, you know, health and also, you know, mental sanity, insanity, mental illness, as it may be called, right? Because the idea of the wrongdoing, right? Here we have avon, avon or aon, aon, right? The aon or awain, some pointings of his awain, right? Avain. Right, this vanity, this avon, this moral iniquity, moral twisting, and moral perversity. Let's bring up that word right here for a moment, where he says, "My punishment." Notice it says right here, "My punishment." Right, avon. We have avon or aon, aon. Right, aon. Right, the aon. Right, or avon, aon, is perversity, depravity, iniquity. Note the word right there is guilt. Right, right there, the other word. There we go, guilt, guiltiness. Rests upon them conscience. BMW, Bob Marley and the Whalers. Right, with that tune right there, guiltiness. Bringing out a primitive, a simple, a basic, but in the full of fullness of it, what we can say a deep truth. That guilt can rest on one's conscience Right? And the relation of the conscience with the soul, right? And thereby be a heavy, heavy burden, right? Psychologically, you know? This is what people talk about drugs or alcohol or other sort of like escape, like somebody's looking to like escape. So they do things so they don't have to think about other things. When they think about other things, it's like there's a big load on them, it's a big weight on them. Right? This sometimes can be brought out theologically as the punishment of iniquity, right? Guilt, the condition. Notice what it says right here, the condition, right? The condition, guilt as great guilt of a condition, right? Psychologically, mm-hmm. And we put it in digital terms, it's almost like data overload. Right? You know, or it can slow down the processing. It's like a weight. It's almost like a heavy document. This document, you know, has a lot of megabytes or it's gigabytes, you know, or it could be a, you know, um, terabyte. You know, it's a heavy document. That means as long as you have this much, you know, memory, you know, like like on our devices, when the memory gets used up, you know, or there's no more memory, you know, left because of that weight but then when you relieve that off of your system you know you either transfer it elsewhere you like download it you download that bu burden i often sometimes would quote as an example what was quoted to i and i and give thanks to the archbishop yitzhak that was sent you know bring forward the ethiopian Tawahedo church you know um, as Ephraim Isaac says, you know, why the Ethiopian Tawadu church, mostly Jewish in this tribe, this ancient tribe and tradition of all of the churches, you know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, we'll, we'll get to that particular point right there, you know, um, but it was in Ethiopia, Right, there was a tradition, the highland tradition among the Israelites of Ethiopia and the faithful, we say, uh, Christian, 
you know, believers in the Messiah, that if I wronged my brother, I would go to his house and I'll put a stone on my shoulder. And if my brother might um, takes that stone, like with that stone, he could stone me, you know, depends on what I did to him and uh, don't know what his, his state of mind is, whether he'd be willing to forgive me. But basically, I'm acknowledging my guilt by going to my brother with that stone on my shoulder. And he acknowledges his forgiveness by taking that stone off of my shoulder, by lifting Nasa. You see it there? Right? By lifting Nasa, right? by lifting that stone, by lifting that burden from off of I and putting it down and then we can reason and chat. And this is what many had observed right, to be a kind of an excellent, um, we could say word pick, you know, uh, expression, you know, like a, a kind of a, um, a verbal, um, hi a, 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 a physical hieroglyph, <laughs> so to speak, you know, um, I'm trying to bring out like a determiner, like what they, what they show in, in some of the pictographic writings, like ancient, the Metunet, uh, Romet, you know, the Ren and Kemet, they would show like these different, you know, symbolic, like a symbolic gesture, right? Like a symbolic, when you see this gesture, you know what it's about, you know? So if you saw one go to the next one for stone on their shoulder and that one takes, lifts up the stone. Notice what we're pointing to, lifting, right? And here is the connection here when we're talking about Nasa. Nasa actually means to lift and in this context that we're showing in the first example of forgiveness or, or the idea of forgive in the Hebrew Bible, right, means to forgive, the lifting, that sense of lifting, right, that sense of lifting. Let's go to our other example right here. So just bringing the other side to what is known right here. Now, this is the masculine noun, avon, avon, aon. Right, Awon, right, or Awain, Avain, Avon. Perversity, that is moral evil, fault, iniquity, mischief. This is like how it's been translated after the, the, the colon and the hyphen. When you're reading, learning to read the Strong's definition, fault, iniquity, mischief, punishment of iniquity, sin. This is how it sometimes is translated differently. So in some places in the Bible, you'll find it in one place as fault, next place as iniquity, next place as mischief, next place as punishment. So here's where it gets a little bit confusing, because if you're following it from an English perspective, right, a translator might translate it as sin, although the word chat or chet, chata, right, chata, that word is the usual word for sin. You, you also what I'm saying. Right, just to show that this is where the confusion may come in. Now, here's the root word, awa, 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 or ava, ava, awa. Right, awa means to bend, to twist, to distort, to be like twisted. You bow down, like something's perverted, it's all twisted up, right? It's distorted, it's perverse, it's wrong, right? To commit a wrong, to commit like a wrongdoing, iniquity, right? To crook somebody. Right? To be a crook, literally or figuratively, to do something. Now, after the colon and the hyphen, these, everything you see in Strong's definition after the colon and the hyphen is the different ways this one Hebrew word has been translated, especially in the King James Version of the Bible. And this is where we recognize the inconsistency, right? In, in many places, some key places, to the full sense of what's being spoken of, right? And therefore, there's a version of Christianity that's based on the King James translation, right? And in some cases, the translation is at best, um, you know, um, ambiguous, right? But at worst, nasha is deceptive, right? So here is the first case of forgiveness in the Bible where people run over it and never really get it. From a Hebrew perspective, one can more immediately get it. Wait, Cain said to Yahweh, he said that his punishment, 
right, is greater than I can bear? Or did he say, did he moreover say right here that his iniquity, his moral perversity, right, is greater in the sense of gadol is like big. Gadol, gadol in the Hebrew, the word for greater, the Hebrew word gadol, the root sense is big, gadol, right? It's big, gadol, right? What does he say in the in, in the Hebrew right here? He says right here, he says, um, he says, gadol avoni mi na, na, mi niso, mi from niso, niso, niso from nasa. But the sense of niso is that which is like can be born. Mean niso, mean niso. Like his it's it, his moral perversity is is big, big. His moral perversity from being carried, from being lifted. Mean niso, mean niso. That's this word right here. Mean niso. All right, you see that word mean niso. Let's go down here, and we have the Hebrew. Um, Strong's right here, the H uh, seven fifty three seventy five. You see where the two words? There's the nasa, and there's the nasa. One has a hey, a H at the end, nasa, nasa, nasa with the H, and nasa, 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 nasa with the alef. And what does it mean? To lift, to bear up, to carry, to take. To lift, lift up, to bear, to carry, to support, to sustain, to endure, to take away, get this, to take away, to carry off, and that's the sense of forgive, right? Forgive. That's why it's kind of ironic that the first place of forgiveness that's really mentioned in the Bible is the whole Cain incident, Cain, what Cain is saying. You know, concerning you know his 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 iniquity, right? His moral perversity, gadol avoni, mean the soul. It is it is it is bigger, right? Almost the implications imply that it's heavy, because something that's bigger is no doubt heavier. We would think, right? In natural so-called laws, right? Than something that is smaller. Right? So the last sense there to take, to take away, to carry off, to forgive. Right? To forgive. Now there's still other senses of this right here. To forgive. Let's scroll down here. Right? To forgive. Right? To cause, to bear. Right? Iniquity. Mean the soul. Mean the soul. Kind of like the sense of what? To carry it. He's basically saying that I've done something and this thing is so weighty. This like the guiltiness is that it is more than I can bear to say that I'm not can't be forgiven, right? In other words, the idea of forgiveness is like the, like that the wrongdoing, the guilt. We could say the consequence, the psycho spiritual, psychological spiritual consequences of wrongdoing, right? Is such that it's like a weight on the conscience. It's like a load on the conscience. And the forgiveness sense is lifting, is the lifting of that burden, making that lighter. You know what I mean? Like if you run in and somebody throw weights on you, it's going to be a little harder the more the weight is there, right? And if you're not able to take it off for you and nobody take it off for you, it's almost like you're not forgiven, so this is just to bring out the operative sense, right? The operative sense, all right? So notice when we look at all these words here, which we show, showed before, Strong's, the basic primitive root is to lift, right? And then we see the word down here, they have it instead of forgive as pardon, right? As pardon. Now, anyone who has studied the Hebrew, Right on such points, we'll recognize this is true. Now, the first time that forgive is actually mentioned for for the the the, the one study in like the King James version. So, if you now go from the English, the first mention of forgiveness you will say is Genesis fifty, chapter fifty, verse seventeen, which from the English is true, right? But that which was not translated, that 
verse, my punishment is greater than I can bear. He could, he could have said my punish. Notice, notice that the word for punishment what is often translated elsewhere as iniquity. We often bring out the, a better sense, hopefully, in the English as moral perversity. Another way of saying it's like that guiltiness upon the conscience is bigger, gadol, right? Evoni, mean the soul, right? Is is bigger than I can be forgiven. Then can be forgiven, actually, is what he's saying. Mean the soul, mean the soul. Then it can be, right, lifted, lifted up. Nasa, nasa, to lift up. So once again, nasa, nasa means to lift up. But does NASA nasha? NASA nasha. NASA deceived. Nasha nasa. Right? So we got two words here. Nasa and nasha. Right? So here in Genesis 50, 17, right? I think this is what Jacob had told his um his sons concerning Yosef, Yawasaf, right? That what they should say to him, right? So shall y'all say to Yosef, forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did to thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God, the Elohim, right, of thy father. And Joseph, Yosef, wept when they spake to him. Now, this is another area of forgive. Now, you can see clearly that the word here in the King James Version is forgive. You see, next to it, both forgives in the, the two forgives in this one verse is the H5375. If you recall, the H5375 is still Nasa, Nasa, and Nasa, which means to lift up to bear, to take, to take away, to carry off. So what's going on here in Genesis 50, 17? Well, we have the 10 or so brothers of Joseph, right? Who were, you know, angry with him, right? They hated on him. They were jealous of him. They became hateful. They wanted to kill him and eventually sold him right into bondage right they sold their own brother into bondage because they were envious they were jealous you know of joseph his dreams so forth and so on right and they conspired against their own brother mm -hmm. we have to keep this in mind so we're not overly righteous fellow israelites yasharala right Genesis 50, 17 says, So shall y'all say to Joseph, to Joseph, forgive, I pray thee now. Forgive, lift up. So what's being said here in the Hebrew is lift up. I I, I pray thee. Like, like, come on now. Right? Anna. It's from the Anna. Anna, Anna. Na. Like, like, like. Now, what's interesting about this right here. If we go to the actual Hebrew of this right here, let's go down here to to the um where is it to the Tanakh, right? We it says Ko Tomru Li Yosef. Like this Ko Tomru y'all to to say, to like speak, to say, Li Yosef to Yosef, right? Ana sa. They're saying Ana sa na. Anasa na pesha'a acheka. He's saying, saying, come on now. Like, come on, please. We beseech you. That's the sense of pray thee. Not to pray, pray. It's not to pray, pray. But it's like, come on now. Pray the I. Come on now. Come on. Yeah, yeah, you know, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, when we say uh-huh, like that sense of it in the Hebraicism. Anasa na. Anasa na. Anasa, na, like sa, sa. So the word nasha, nasa, nasa, right, as an imperative, nasa, which means to lift, nasa, as an imperative. So I say to a, a man to like lift something, right? And I say sa, 
like anasana, like I'm saying, come on now, to lift. But in this context here, this specific context here in the Hebrew, this has the sense of to lift in a sense of to forgive, right? Like sometimes if you don't forgive somebody, it's like you still have that weight, right? That weight of what they have done, right? Within your conscience, within your mind, within your heart, within your feeling, within your emotion, right? That's why they said that, that truly like forgiveness is not so much for the other person, right? But forgiveness, like when it says to forgive, right? It's not so much for the other person, it's for yourself. It's for like clarity, you know? It doesn't change what they did that was wrong. It doesn't change whether they acknowledge and, and repent themselves and change their mind, you know? Right? That's still on them, right? To make it less of a burden, right? And get the idea of burden, to make it less of a burden for you, especially if you're the wrong party. Sometimes the wrong party suffers even more so, right? Both parties suffer because it becomes like an entanglement, basically, if you understand. You know, Hebraically, metaphysically, it becomes an entanglement. Kol tomru le Yosef. Ana sana pesha acheka. Right? To lift up the pesha. 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 The, 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 the trespass. Pesha. Right? So here, let's go to the, the King James Version. So we go back and forth. Here a little, there a little. Right? So the word forgive is nasa. Nasa means forgive, right? Or lift, lift. And it can also mean lift in the sense of lifting a burden, right? To forgive, right? So here, the word trespass, right? The H6588, Pesha, Pesha. What is Pesha? Pesha, BDB says a transgression, rebellion, a transgression against individual. So one coming a Pesha, Right, a transgression it can be against an individual, right? Or pesha can be like a nation against nation, you know? Pesha can be like a transgression against Hilehim, the Elohim in general, right? And then it goes through this. But pesha also is brought out as the guilt of transgression. So not just the act that was done, right? But that unaccountableness. Right within the more spiritual, psycho spiritual level, right? We know that the psychology, the psyche, and psychological diseases are real, even though we don't see them to say, see what's really going on with the naked eye, right? We know that they are real, and this is this is where the Hebrew sense of like the soul, the nephesh, yeah, and also the suke later on in the coin of Greek comes in, right? into a working, right, and a real world application. This is like the science of Torah. So what we're doing here is Torah as both theory, but also as science. Offering for transgression. So there were the offerings for various transgression, but then Strong's break it down like this. Revolt, like a revolt in the sense of a rebellion. It can now the same word in the King James Version of the Bible in some places is brought out as rebellion, Pesha. Other places is brought out as sin, Pesha. Though more correctly as transgression and guilt. Right? Often this is what is known as the guilt. You know, like this Pesha is like the transgression. There's the guilt of transgression, rebellious, trespassive, right? I mean, how did right, they trespass? How did the brothers trespass? Right? How did they trespass against him? They took away his freedom. They took away his liberty. They was about to take away his life right? when we think about it. Now, notice it says the trespass of thy brethren and their sin and their chata'ah, 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 the chata'ah, their sin. What is sin? Right? Because it's important when we talk about forgiveness, what are we forgiving? Now, here Strong says sin is offense, sometimes habitual sinfulness, right? The offense is an interesting word, but let's get to the root. It's from chata, 
Chata. What is Chata? Chata, BDB, brings it out perfectly, right? Chata means to, to sin, but the direct meaning is to miss. I say, miss me with that. Miss me, to miss, to miss the way, to go wrong, and therefore, really, right, part of the process. There's a kind of a process, right, that begins from that missing, incurring guilt, forfeiting, right? But then also it has a sense of purifying from uncleanness. It's almost like when somebody says um, they don't give a uck, right? The scripture seems to imply an idea is that you got to give a uck, right, about your uck, in order to be forgiven of your uckery. So I'm using the word uck as sin. You know, the, the, the F-bomb is often used, but using the word uck as sin, right? So this is where the sense of purify from uncleanness comes in, right? Within the, um, like, tabernacle sense, the science, right, of the, of the tabernacle sense, of the holy place. But the direct meaning of chata is to miss, Afro-Semitically, in the African Semitic languages, even in the Amharic, we have ata, hata, hata, and ata, hata, and ata. The older form is hata, like we have here, hata, and the, the, the more modern form is ata, basically to, to miss, right? To miss in the sense of you miss the goal, like you miss the bullseye. You're aiming for the bullseye, but you miss. You fall short. You miss the mark. Or you miss the path of that which was right, right? That which was right, that was righteous, and that which also is your duty. And thereby, you incur the guilt, right? The up, the uckery. You incur also, there's a penalty, right? By the uckery. And in that which you miss, now you are forfeiting. Right? Because you missed to carry out your right and duty, therefore you forfeit right, your privileges, one might say. You forfeit your privileges, right? but there's a forfeiting. Right? Now, the further senses of it, to be a lost, you know, getting through you know, the different senses of the Hebrew, the he fill here, to miss the mark. That's another sense of missing the mark, inducing to miss the mark. You know, like you're about to throw your dart at the bullseye and somebody pushes you at the last moment. <laughs> you know what I mean? They've caused you, they induce you to miss the mark, to, to uck up, to sin, right? Bring into guilt or condemnation and punishment. And also say the hitpa'el sense is to miss oneself, to lose oneself, to wander from the way, right? And then the secondary entrance is how the Hebrew rite and ritual address that psycho-spiritual state, the purifying oneself from that uncleanness, right? So here Strong's break it down like this, properly to miss. It can be in a figurative sense, like when it's applied even to the psycho-spiritual level of our reality, it's in a figural sense. Or in a literal sense, you literally miss something, right? By interference, Right? To forfeit, to lack, be caught lacking, right? Expiate, you know? So this word right here is an interesting word as well, but this is what they're saying here, right? For they did to the evil. Let's bring out these key words. Ra'a, ra, ra, and ra'a. We have ra, and we have ra'a, ra, and ra'a. This basically means bad, that which is bad. As an adjective in biblical language is like evil, but bringing out the Hebrew sense, right? The HD is like bad, like disagreeable, something being or someone being malignant, unpleasant, evil. That which gives pain was considered ra and ra'a, right? Unhappiness, ra, right? Misery, ra, all that ra ra, as we say today, all that ra ra, right? Evil, something displeasing. Right? So, this that which is evil, see, when you think about evil, you think about it in white Anglo Saxon Protestant latter day, right? Right? Counterfeit Christian terms. You think about it just like in a religious sense. But in the reality of Ha Torah, as the Torah addresses life and reality, right? Ra, right? 
can be according to its kind. So land, right, that has been polluted is ra'a, right? Water, ra'a, right? You know, and so forth, so on. Something that lost, like it has a bad value, right? If somebody want, want me to do a business deal and I recognize in that business deal there's loss, I say he came to me with evil, right? Now, you may think it's like a religious kind of a thing, right? But I'm just speaking to reality. He came to me with something that had a bad value. It was worse than this. So even in a sense, ra, right? Ra, right? Which often in religious circles is translated as evil, also means worse, something that's worse, right? This is evil compared to this. This is worse compared to that. Something being sad or unhappy is ra, ra, right? Something being hurtful in the sense of evil, something being hurtful. Notice what it goes on to say, an unkind or somebody is vicious in their disposition, their attitude is ra, they're on that ra, ra. See how we talk that talk as Hebrews lost found by the Israel, right? By Israel, how we talk like you know people say, oh, that's the Hebronics, that's this, no, that's just the Hebronics, you know, working it out in our DNA with the language we speak, right? Trying to get us close, right, to the to the to the root, you know, to that which we ha is our own. We said that rah rah, all that rah rah, or so and so's on that rah rah, right? I could say they're unkind. They're vicious in disposition, the attitude. The attitude is bad. The attitude is evil. See, if you say bad in English and evil, they seem like they're on different levels, right? Bad is not so bad, but evil is really evil. No, but from the Hebraic, ra'a, right? It's the same, right? It's, 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 both words are bringing out just different aspects of the same thing. Wicked, ethically. Right? In general, it can be of persons. So notice how it's applied. Of persons or of thoughts. So in the case of Yosef and his brothers asking for forgiveness and what they done did, they as the persons, their thoughts, their deeds, actions, distress, misery, injury, calamity. Right? Now we have the noun in the mask and the ra, ra adversity. Right? Wrong. Even in the ethical sense. Somebody shortchanges you in business, that's evil, right? That's how we Hebraically would look at it from using the English, right? But ra, right? Um, evil, misery, distress, injury, ra'ah. Now we have the feminine, ra'ah, the feminine aspect and the same ethical, evil, right? So bad, so that which is bad, right? Evil naturally or morally hurtful, harmful. Now, this includes the second, the feminine form as adjective or noun. And these are some of the ways after the colon and the hyphen, you see in the Strong's definition, is some of the different ways it has been translated. Something grievous, something heavy, something harmful, hurtful, right? Certain types of mischief, right? Displeasure, calamity, right? Naught, misery, noisome, right? Not pleasant, doesn't please, it's sad, it's sores, it's sorrows, troubles, vex, it's worse, right? It's wretched, it's wrong, right? As it says, including there's, a, there's the male and the feminine, the ra and the ra sense of it as well, which brings in even another level right there. And then they say again, right? For they did to thee that which was hurtful, was harmful, it was bad, it was the worst. It was ra'a, right? It was evil. And now we pray thee, we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants, right? Of the Elohim of thy father. And Yosef wept when they spake to him. So here's another case of what we're speaking about. They asked that that be lifted up, right? The burden. They had this guiltiness on their, you know, consciousness, you know? You know, they had this guiltiness on their consciousness and they prayed, what is it? Wa'ata, wa'ata, sa'na, and now, wa'ata, now, wa'ata, wa'ata, 
Wata sa 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 lift up sa lift up from nasa we have sa na come on now lift up right lipesha abde elohe abika right forgive the trespass the fesha fesha the, the trespass abde of the servants of elohe the elohim abika the Elohim of your father. You know, so here is the second case, right, place in the Bible we have forgive, right? Now notice right here, still again, we don't even have to go into the detail right here, just to sum up, the H5375, forgive, right? Forgive, therefore forgive, therefore lift up, I pray thee, my sin, only this once. Now this is actually paro, the peraa, peraa of of Mitzrayim. This is the Pharaoh of um, the Tawi, right? This is the Pharaoh of the Tawi saying to Moshe and Aharon, "Now therefore forgive, sa na." Right? He's asking to lift up, right? So the idea of forgive was to lift up, right? So if we forgive someone else. What are we doing? We are lifting. You know, whatever that sin, that wrong, that, you know, iniquity, right? Off of the consciousness. We normally would say letting it go, taking the stone off the shoulder and putting it down on the ground, as it were. Within us, remember that the forgiveness, when we are in the Brit Hadash sense, especially commanded to forgive, right, others. There's, it's a twofold sense. One is once you recognize what's going on, you gotta you can't allow their wrongdoing to make you wrong, right? So when it says like the forgiving from our heart, we don't carry that on our emotions, our motive body, and thereby get ourselves psychologically sick. We don't get ourselves sick with it, right? We don't get ourselves sick with it. Now I know I began off on the NASA thing, right? But just to show how NASA Right means to lift and, in a sense, to forgive. But nasha, right? Nasha means to deceive. I know I didn't touch on it just yet, but I'm just going to show you some of the places you can see. It's the same H5375. Yet now, if thou will forgive their sin. So here, Moshe is praying to Yahweh and saying, if you will like lift up. The chata, the missing of the mark, right? And if not, he would want to be blotted out. Moshe wanted to be given given on behalf of the children of Israel. Now, the secondary sense of forgive is this here, is salach, salach, or some of the Hebrew of the camps say salakia, but actually it's salach, salach, salach. Salach means to forgive. It means to pardon as well, right? To forgive, to pardon as well. But it is a, here we find this word salach for forgive first appearing in connection with the rites and the rituals, the Hebrew rites and rituals being instituted in the wilderness concerning sacrifice. So here is, you call, we call this like more of a ceremonial sort of forgiveness, right? According to this, priestly type, right, that kingdom of the priest type that Leviticus gives a a shadow or a kind of an overview, as we would say. So here, Salah, right, Salah is different than the Nasa forgiveness. You see, so the Nasa forgiveness is almost like saying, take it off of our consciences. It's, it has more to do with the person, right? It has more to do with the person. Yes, I. 369 Faith. Yes, I. Simon Ra Simon Faith Ross, right there. No, he just came up on the screen right there. So you'll notice that Salah is the 5545 word. And this is now more in connection with the rites and the ritual and the proclamation that was made for bringing forward the proper offering. But it's the nasa, right? It's the nasa that is the matter of the heart, 
we could say the heart and the mind. You know, then this is the reason why in the Brit Chadash or Robeinu, Yeshua HaNotri, right? Notice this right here. Yeshua HaNotri speaks about us unless we forgive each one, his brother, like from his heart. You know, because one is going to be burdened, right, by that, you know, and you need to lift that up, you know, you know, like, you know, deal with the matter, you know, open re re rebuke is better than secret love, you know, bring it out, speak one piece. If the other chooses to repent, have a change of mind, hallelujah, so be it. If they don't, don't carry that burden, right, you know, so now notice this right here, here. It says this, it says in Numbers 14, 19, pardon, right, which is the Salah, Salah, right, I beseech thee the iniquity of this people. Moshe now is plea bargaining for the children of Israel according to the greatness of your mercy. And as thou hast forgiven, notice forgiven this people. Notice he used the word Nasa. Remember Nasa means to lift them up, to carry, to bear. You know, when one says, um, I can't with you, like you hear people say nowadays, they say, I can't, yo, 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 I just can't with so-and-so. Like they can't, with, it's like saying they can't bear with them. You know what I mean? You know, like to bear with somebody, to not physically, literally carry them, you know what I mean? But to bear with it, like we say it in a lot of different usages. So one can see this interesting connection, right? As to explain, one thing was theological, right? We we have like well, I said theological sense according to the ancient types of of worship, you know the expectations of the people and how the people worship, and then what was instituted among the children, you know, among the children of Yisrael, right? So there's a, there's a salah, the salah sense, right? And then we have here kapar. Kafar, Kafar, Kapar in Deuteronomy 21 and 8. That's the covering where it says, and the blood shall be covered them, right? It shall be covered on their behalf, right? The blood shall be covered. I mean, there's no blood. There's no blood guiltiness. It shall be covered. So we see these sort of words, Nasa and Joshua, right? And he will not forgive your transgressions. In Joshua 24 and 19, he would not lift them up. You know, he would keep that weight. It's almost like even weight on the scales. You know, like even in weighing the scales, weighing, you know, the heart. Going back to a very interesting ancient typology, right? Nor your sins, nor your missing the mark, right? I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy handmaid. Right? What is this? Nasa. So you see in the interpersonal relationships what it is, right? As we go through this right here. Now, one final thing right here, we'll probably get into this maybe a little bit more in detail, since the main thing was to prove, well, that Nasa, Nasa does not mean to deceive, it means to lift up, right? Nasa doesn't mean to deceive. <laughs> I'm not speaking for the space agency because that Nasa, Nasha, but here is just a little bit on the Nasha, just to connect the Nasha dots. When we look up the word beguiled, right? This is one of the first areas in the scripture. So we just gave you the first area where forgive is in the scripture somewhat hidden or obfuscated by the translation. And here, the first place that that deceived, right? To deceive, right? So Nasa, 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 Nasha, right? And here's what we have right here. And Yahuwah, right? Elohim said to the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman, the Isha, right? She said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. So we have this sense of beguiled. My beguiled. Now, this is the first sense of beguiled right here. This is our key word, nasha. You see the dot, the pointing, nasha. So this nasha is being confused my, by some with nasa. Nasha means to beguile, to deceive. 
Nasha, right? Nasha. Nasha means to lead astray. So when the woman said that the Nahash, the serpent known in Hebrew as the Nahash, right? The Nahash or Nakash, some might say, but Nahash beguiled her, led her astray mentally to delude, right? To delude, right? In a kind of a moral sense to seduce, right? But plainly, she said that the Nahash had deceived her, that the Nahash had nashed her, nasha, nasha her. So here is where we kind of uh, pointed to a little earlier, even in this meme right here, right? And as we go down here, we see that we have the 5376 word, which is nisa, nisa. Nissa is from the Nasa, Nasa and Nissa. Nissa, it corresponds to like to carry away, like like ones are carried away in the captivity that can be used or like a make an insurrection, you know, like Nissa, getting carried away, Nissa, getting lifted up. Literally, it's like getting lifted up, Nissa. Now, it's interesting because um, there's some other interesting links with Nasa. All right, so when we hear everybody talking about oh, NASA from the Hebrew, that's in the Hebrew, and you know, let's say one fool make many. Hopefully, a wise one can make others wise. Yes, I Rastafari 5377, right? Nasha, Nasha, it's all about right, the pointing. Nasha, Nasha, right? A primitive root means to lead astray. Nasha, as we read to you mentally to delude, right, or morally to seduce, nasha. And after the colon and the hyphen, you see where in the Strong's Concordance, how it's been translated in the King James, namely and mainly the King James Version of the Bible in the English, beguile, right? So it could have said that the Nahash, the serpent, led me astray. The serpent deluded me. The serpent seduced me. Coming from the Hebrew, the Nasha. The serpent led me away. The serpent deluded me mentally, right? Or morally seduced me, right? But the King James Version uses the classic, right? The serpent beguiled me, right? Beguiled. But that word beguiled is somewhat beguiling because it really means to deceive. So the serpent deceived me, right? And she says, and she ate. So the same thing with the NASA. People saying the NASA means um, to deceive. No, they, in a sense, have been deceived, right? So hopefully ones and ones can update that particular mean, right? NASA does mean to lift up. And that's what they're talking about, lifting up, going up into the firmament or somewhere like that, you know? But what they're doing up there. And, and what they're making people believe is the Nasha, is the Nasha. So Nasa, Nasha, Nasa, Nasha. So right there, you can see this. So here they say Nasa because they're not reading. What they're not reading is, see right there when you see the S? You see that S? You see the S right there, Nasa, right? You see the A? That's a long A sound, Nasa, right? Patah, right? The Na, but that's Sh. That that right there is shh, right? The the V on top of the S. This is really nasha. So the problem is that ones and ones, you know, probably look in a dictionary, but they ignore the phonetic value and they interpret it as though it was written without the phonetic value. And that's where the confusion has come in. You know, I know some ones might be upset. You know, but the you know, truth is an offense, it's, it's not a hata, right? So here, 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 the word, getting into the word, this is what we want to share with you right here. Nasa, right? The Nasa means to carry, to bear, to lift, lift off, Nasa. See, that's really probably more of the real reason why they named it or took that acronym, Nasa. Why? Right? Because whatever Jews or Yehudi or whatever they, even some of the Protestants, they study a lot of, they've studied a lot of these things. Nasa means to take up, to lift up, 
Now, contextually, as we already showed you, it means to, to be here with something as to say to forgive something, to be here, right? To be here with something, to lift up, lift up a burden, right? And we was applying it to what is meant about forgiving people. See, when we forgive people or we forgive, we are lifting up that pain, that hurt that's on our psychology, our psycho spiritual being. So it's not a weight that causes some, you know, mental illness, you know, or even some psychosis because a lot of people are suffering with it. Thus, the, you know, big farmer, right? The, the, the big farmer and, 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 and the, um, what do you call it? The sorceries, the pharmacesis, you know, the pharma, pharmaceutical industry is actually playing on that, right? Because of this burden on one's souls, right? So forgiving someone else does not mean that one truly gives them a pardon, if you understand what I'm saying, right? You are lifting up that burden, right, off of yourself, Right, that hurt, that pain, that burden, like somebody punch you, right? So even after they punch you, it still stings, right? You know, um, but once that pain lifts up, it goes. So even with things like some physical hurts, many physical hurts might fall or, you know, get punched or whatever. You know, if it's not too bad at first, it, it might sting a little bit, but then it kind of heals up. It gets better naturally. But we as beings that have a certain amount of willpower, I'm not going to say the free will, because everybody's will is not as free as everybody else, you know, but, you know, we have an ability to hold on to things. That's why when Yeshua spoke to the disciples, Yeshua Hanotri, you know, you're like, whatever, like, you know, you forgive, right, is forgiven, and whatever you don't forgive is not, you know, forgiven. But then it becomes burdensome, you know what I mean? Like in a the theological economy, right? If other people are telling me, oh, I'm sorry about what I what they did to me, right? And I don't want to forgive them. And now I go and I'm asking for forgiveness. You see, you see the confusion. Or, or I go to the Almighty to ask for forgiveness, but I have not forgiven others. So I'm basically coming to him, even if I don't consciously know it, I'm carrying these burdens, you know? You know, like sometimes when people are recalling somebody who done did them wrong, right? It seems even more intense, right? The 50th, 100th, 150th time they have been, you know, regurgitating, you know, the incident, you know what I mean? That's like there, there is almost like a weight, you know? And then even if we go deeper into science, Sometimes they are able to see these things, you know, medically, you know, they could see how sometimes these things even begin to affect, you know, the natural part, our brain matter, so to speak, you know, and even can cause certain impairing. Remember that life is all about the energy, you know, and it's the energy that we have that moves in these bodies, right? And therefore... We must be conscious not to carry certain energy. You know what I mean? We have to let go of that energy. That does not mean that that person, you know, the wrongdoer themselves is, is better off. They're better off now if they choose to repent because you're not holding against them anything. You know what I mean? Like if I'm the wrong party, right? And somebody says the person who wronged you is willing to you know, own up to it, right? And make this sort of recompense. And I might say, that's not good enough. I'm, I'm still holding it, you know? But then I can let that go. So we let, we forgive because it benefits us. You know what I mean? The faithful, you know what I mean? The, those who seek to be the righteous, those who seek to be the B'nai Elohim, right? Does not mean that the formal charges are forgiven, Right? But it means in my heart and my mind, in my 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 soul and my spirit, my psycho spiritual makeup, I have to let that go. I choose to let that go. Right? You know, because then you can see, you know, you can see matters much more clearly. 
you know. Some people are really holding burdens, psychological burdens of pains and and other things over the years, even though sometimes the people who cause the pains are no longer maybe even in this life. You know what I mean? And they and almost like they blame these things. These things can become great psychological burdens. Right? So the sense of forgive in the primary sense, right? To carry, to bear, to lift, right, to take up, right? In the next sense of this word here, we have nasi. Right? We have nasi. What is nasi? Nasi in the Hebrew is a leader, it's like a prince. Is in the biblical Hebrew like a prince, to say like a leader, a chief, right? An elevated one is a nasi. See the sense of elevated. They lift it up. They they carry, they're born by you could say the others. You know what I mean? The leader, the chief, the nasi, right? Princes, chiefs, and leaders in the Hebrew is the Nisiim. The Nisiim. Nisiim. The Nisiim are the princes. They, they're basically the Nasi. The many Nasis. The Nasi is like a, a leader, right? And now here we have Tisa. Tisa, right, is like to take up, to lift up. Tisa. Tisa. What's interesting here is Nasui. Right, nasui, nasui, nasoi, nasui. Nasui means in Hebrew to be married, but it also means to be taken up. But in a psalm, we have the same word nasui, right? Where it says about bless are he whose what transgressions, right, are forgiven. When we read in the Hebrew, it says like Asherah, you know, ones whose transgressions like their trespasses are lifted are lifted up so it's a kind of an interesting um how can we say the two truths right or this duality so to speak in the hebrew nasui nasui like married one is nasui married one is taken up but it also can have on another level you can see the connection with forgive but remember forgive is not really forgive in the western gentile sense but it's like lifting that burden right or if you're holding something against the next person right like that if you're holding something that somebody did to you against them so every time you see them you're holding you're thinking about that that's a weight and you know weight is a heavy load right and sometimes by carrying heavy loads, you know, like often, physically, if you're carrying a lot of heavy loads all the time, you know, there can be some physical damages. Now imagine how much more so can that be like psycho-spiritually to us. So once again, NASA, right, in Hebrew does not mean to deceive. <laughs> No, just the way it sounds, NASA in Hebrew does not mean to deceive. Oh, like you're saying the, like the, the agency, but no, NASA, right? This is all because ones were not able to read the phonetics, right? One was not able to read the phonetics. They're reading this as though it's NASA, but anyone who can read Hebrew know this is NASHA, NASHA. NASHA mean to deceive, right? Or as Eve said, or... Uh, the Isha said, Eshet, or Set said, she said, the serpent beguiled. He beguiled me. So ones are being beguiled. We could have gone into this right here, right? Now, here, 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 right? The word, the Hebrew word that we pronounce as Nasa, right? They say more correctly, Nasar. They add an R. No. It's actually the slightly different Nasa. So really what they're doing, see, this is, they were trying to get to it, right? But the word that we that y'all say is the Hebrew word for deceive is not nasa, it's nasha. But here he's bringing out, or they're bringing out nasa, which is the primitive verb root meaning to lift, to bear, to carry, to take. And you already know we went through all of this right here. You see where it says forgive right there, the third entry right there. All right, so this is in one form of Hebrew, Nasa, and this is the word right here. You see, with the dot on the left side of the sheen, right, the one that like the three, you know, you know, like um, 
on the left side is sa. On the right side is sha. So na sa, as it's here, means to lift up, right? Lift up, to take, to carry. In some contexts, it can mean like to, to forgive, to lift up, right? Lift up that burden, that, you know, guilt, that so forth and so on, right? But na sa, right, means to lift. Like you see here, there's shadow, lifting up, lift up, nasa. So actually, it's, a, it's almost like a perfect name for what they were purporting. It must have been doing some Hebrew magic there, right? However, what they do in a lot of their theories and ideas, right, is to deceive, right? This is the psalm right here. It is Psalm, um, what is it, 30? Which psalm is this right here? This is Psalm, let me get my scripts right here. I know this is a little bit longer, brothers and sisters, but this is as kind of direct as possible to give you all, 36, Psalm, Psalm, that's Psalm 36, Psalm 32, Psalm 32, Psalm 32. This is Psalm 32 right here to give you like, just a zoom in on this. Now I would like to address the word, save salvation from the Hebrew, right? Because it's another level, right? To remember that a lot of this has been translated into English and I'm sure the translators may have tried their best, you know, but now to whom more is given, you know, we have this information, technology, society, go to and fro, knowledge increase. Ashrei, here it begins, Ashrei, Nisui. Remember that same word that's in the red box? Nisui has been taken up. Right, has been taken up, Nisui. Also, Nisui is married in the Hebrew. Nisui is a sense of married. Literally, it has been taken up, but in a kind of a connotative sense, it's like married ones. Ashrei Nisui. Happy is the one who's... See, the King James Version says blessed, but that, that's not the Baruch. Not the Baruch bless. But this is the Ashray, the Beatitudes bless, right? Or the happy. Happy is the one, right? Ashray Nisui. Happy is the one who's has been taken up. Pesha. Pesha. We touched on that, right? The Pesha, right? With Joseph and his brothers, the Pesha, right? Kasui Khata'a. Kasui. Kasui from Kasa. Kasa mean like to cover. Kasui is covered over, that which is covered over. Nesui is that which has been taken up, right? That which has been taken up. So what it's saying here is ones are happy in the Beatitudes, as Yeshua Hanotri and the Beatitudes, you know? Asherei Nesui Pesha. Happiness, right? One that has, whose transgression has been lifted, has been lifted. That heavy load of that transgression, that, that kind of rebellion, in that sense, has been lifted. Kasui, kasui, and covered over, kasui, chata'a. And one's chata'a, remember it says sin, but we broke that down early in the early part of this vlog here. Chata'a is um, to miss, chata'a. Chata, to miss, right? We caught lack and missing the mark, right? So here is another interesting sense right here. Could have gone into this a little bit more, but this is Psalm 32 that in King James Version reads, Bless is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Or from the Hebrew, Ashrei Nesui Pesha Kasui Chata'a or Kasui Chata, right? Happy or happiness, right? Happiness is the one whose transgression has been taken up, has been lifted up. King James Version says forgiven, right? Because that burden being lifted up, that is the essence, right? Like don't burden yourself. Like don't burden yourself with it. Don't put it on your head don't, or your heart. Don't burden yourself with it. Asherei nesui pesha. Kasui and covered over. Chata'a. Kasui. Right? Covered over. 
right? You know, that's the sense of the kapar, the atonement, that covering, almost like an insurance policy, you know? You know, the insurance policy when they say, oh, you're covered, right? Or if you thought you was covered and you say, oh, no, the insurance will get this, and then your insurance say you're not covered. You see, that's not so happy there. Now, here is just a, a case in point of how nasa nasha, right? Nasa, I know we touched on forgiveness, and it wasn't to be so-called um, so called religious, but to be really just and right and accurate, right? Here, you can see where they are using the fisheye lens. This is the nasha, nasha, the beguiling, right? This also is another sense of nasha, too, because it's actually Photoshop. You know what I mean? Nasa in Hebrew does not mean means to lift up. And Nasha, right, mean to deceive. I, I know a lot of ones are investing a lot in that right there, you know, but here's another way of seeing it, you know. Now here this is all because as we say, notice what it says Nasha. Notice it says every day, Nasha, Nasha, Nasha. But still almost like now now it gets to the point when the truth now is coming out here that ones you know are going to still try to hold to the lies and then now they're going to be deceiving what it says deceiving themselves right you know but what's interesting also about the word nasha it means to deceive right greatly deceive beguile but it can mean to seize or also to forget in a sense of to utterly forget Right, with the speaking about the nasha, right, the nasha sense, right, nasha sense, right, nasha. Now one then then do the acronym or you know like what anagram of the name Satan or Satan. But note that also in some Afro-Shemitic cultures, this being is called Shatan. So nasha, you you can still bring out the Shatan or the Shaitan. Right, even from that right there, you know, and talking about those numbers, you know, they beguile people with like the pseudo mathematics, you know, it's mathematics about something that most of it we can't really empirically prove, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is a, a, a little different NASA here, right? National Atheist and Satanic Association, right? Babylon has fallen to lies. Right? So also the NASA lies. One of the NASA lies is that NASA means to deceive. Nasha is the word in the Hebrew for to deceive. You know, exactly the same photo, right? When he went to Apollo 11 and Apollo 14. Wow. I guess they caught it. It was their lucky day, right? <laughs> but anyway, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, you know, this is not to get into the other related reasoning about NASA, right? Just because we're clarifying this word, right? We don't let the deceivers, you know, off the hook. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, this here, we approve of this message right here. Just to bring it out, there's a little bit more we could go into, but I think suffice it to say, you know, suffice it to say for now. So NASA, back to NASA right here. Boom, we'll seal up right here. NASA, NASA. Hot to fire.